A high-end PC is only as good as the monitor it's paired with, and unfortunately this is a common place for consumers to cut corners. This decision is understandable considering very capable monitors can cost as much or even more than the PC it's connected to. So how do you avoid spending extra money on features you may not even need? Well, the monitor I'm going to be showcasing today isn't the best at anything, but it's really good at everything. Let's take a look. This is the HP Omen 32, and Omen is the moniker used by HP to differentiate their gaming products from the rest of their lineup. It's similar to Republic of Gamers for Asus. The monitor was released in August of 2016 at a competitive retail price of $429. As the thumbnail and the title of the video suggest, I was able to get this monitor for $299, and that wasn't some sort of crazy sale, but before I show you how to do that, I wanna emphasize how good of a deal that $299 actually is. It's such a good deal, in fact, that I bought two of them. The monitor features a no-frills, serious design language. It has a matte black, kind of dark gray plastic finish around the back and the bezels that surround the display. It has an all-black metal stand, which is heavy and very solid. And on the back of the monitor, you see an ominous red Omen logo. And that's really the only gaming-oriented styling cue visible. It's a really good-looking display. If I had one critique on, on how it looks, I'd say the bezels are a little bit big for my taste. It's extremely sturdy. The dual legs help keep the big display secure, especially considering it weighs almost 20 pounds. It's surprising how minimal the wobble is when you shake the desk. And because of its large size and, and pretty heavy weight, it's pretty difficult to find an inexpensive mo dual monitor arm mount that can actually support it. But I did find one that I'm currently using and you can find that by following the link down in the video description. The monitor buttons to control the on-screen display are around the back on the right side of the monitor, and in most situations that's okay, but if you're using them side by side in a dual monitor configuration like I am, uh, the monitor on the left, it can be a little bit difficult to reach the buttons there, but I imagine most people aren't going to have two of these right next to each other. The user interface is both responsive and easy enough to navigate, and that's not something that can even be said for all really high-end gaming monitors. But let's talk about the specs. What makes 299 such a good deal for these monitors? Well, first of all, they're 32 inches, which coming from a pair of 24s, six inches doesn't sound like a huge difference on paper, but in practice, it is massive. I had to reorganize my entire desk. Dual 32 inch monitors is roughly six square feet of screen. As I just alluded, the monitors are 1440p. I have a Hexacore i7 and a GTX 1060 six gig, both overclocked and they were definitely bottlenecked by a full HD display, a 1080p display. But not only is it 1440p, but it is 75 hertz. And if you already know what hertz are and what refresh rate is, they go ahead and skip ahead about a minute or two in this video. I'm gonna introduce that just a little bit. So essentially hertz is what's used to measure the number of images that a monitor displays in a second. If you've been gaming on a 60 hertz monitor for any amount of time, you will definitely notice an increase to 75 hertz. Unfortunately, anything over 60 using an NVIDIA graphics card introduces some issues. It appears that the monitors are much better optimized to run AMD hardware. It, it runs great at 60. 60 looks super smooth and it looks great. But if you try to run anything over that, it introduces a lot of skipped frames, a lot of stuttering. Just keep that in mind if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can realistically only get 60 out of it, even if you have the hardware that can run it at a higher frequency than that. So now that we've covered refresh rate, let's talk about dynamic refresh rate. So as we just established, monitors will display images on screen at a constant rate, whether it's 30, 60, 75, 144, whatever it is. Now that's a problem when your graphics card is sending more frames to the monitor than the monitor is capable of displaying at a time. What will happen is something called tearing where you'll have maybe part of one frame on the top and part of another frame on the bottom. And it's really jarring, especially in like first person shooters where 
your horizon line is con is constantly changing very quickly. So to resolve that, there's a few things you can do. Vertical sync is one, one thing that, that's common where you basically tell your graphics card uh, through the in-game settings to only push out frames a certain rate and your monitor displays it at 60 FPS. And that, that works pretty well. It's not a perfect science. It also costs resources to do that. So even if your graphics card can run at 60 FPS, it will actually cost resources and actually won't run at 60 FPS anymore. So you actually have, have to have a decent amount of overhead in order to cap it. Really the best case solution is to implement something that's called a dynamic refresh rate where the processing is done by the monitor. The monitor itself will change how quickly it displays frames just like the graphics card does. So if the graphics card is pushing out 75 FPS, then the monitor displays 75 FPS. And because the monitor is what is doing the processing, there isn't any performance hit to your graphics card. And there are two types of technologies you should be aware of, FreeSync and G-Sync. And the end result is the same. FreeSync monitors only work with AMD graphics cards and G-Sync monitors only work with NVIDIA graphics cards. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card like I do, you can still use the graphics card with a monitor, but you won't be able to leverage that variable refresh rate technology. And that will definitely come into play when it comes time to upgrade my hardware. I'll definitely have to look at whether I want to implement that dynamic refresh rate and maybe switch over to Red Team when it comes time to do some upgrades to my graphics card. The Omen is also rated at 99% sRGB color accuracy, which used to be the golden standard for how color accurate a monitor is. The Omen is also a VA panel. There are three major types of display technologies out there. Uh, TN, IPS, and VA. They come in high refresh rates, although not as high as the most premium TN panels. They have really good colors, although not as good as the best IPS panels. You can see it kind of is good at a lot of things. It has really great contrast ratios, 3000 to 1 on this particular model, which isn't as good as OLED, but it's definitely noticeable over a IPS or especially over a TN panel. But how's my overall experience with the monitor been? Well, first, 32 inches is great for immersion, especially in racing games. I feel like stuff is coming by and, and passing by me. It's a much more immersive uh, experience, which is great for racing games, but in FPS games, I notice that I'm missing out on subtle things going on in my peripheral. The most noticeable difference between my existing monitors and these new ones is the contrast ratio. Those deep blacks are really amazing. It makes text super crisp. Uh, it just makes the display look and feel very premium when you have the, those really great contrast ratios. Okay, but I mentioned that I got this monitor for $299. How did I manage that? If you are a Costco member, they sell this exact monitor for $299, which is the best $299 deal that Costco offers outside of their pizza slice and drink combo. Mm. That's the best $2.99 you'll ever spend. So at this point, you might be thinking, oh great, I watched this whole video and I find out I have to be a Costco member in order to get this deal. You can go to one of those uh, big box uh, brick and mortar retailers, such as Best Buy, and you can show them the $2.99 ad. They'll price match it for you and you can walk out of Best Buy of all places with this monitor for less than $300. The HP Omen 32 is a terrific all-rounder that offers a feature set that isn't really lacking in any one area. Again, prioritize your individual needs and select a monitor accordingly. Well, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you appreciated it or if I potentially saved you a couple hundred dollars. I'd appreciate that. Uh, also, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when future content is available. And anything I mention in the video can be found in the video description down below. Just follow my affiliate link to find it on Amazon. Now, to be completely transparent, Amazon is not the cheapest place to find this monitor. I just want to be transparent there. If you still want to buy it on Amazon anyway, I would definitely appreciate it because I get a cut from that, but I want to be transparent. You can find it cheaper elsewhere. If you want to see other videos, uh, PC peripherals and builds, uh, those are available here. We have another build video coming up the end of this month, maybe start of next month and in the, in the next few weeks. So make sure you're subscribed so you know when that's available and get in the habit of checking the video description for giveaways. We don't have one going on now, but we should start one here in the near future. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.